Keep your pseudo scientific quackery. That shit is whack to me. You manufacture data, I close the factory. And actually, you have to be nuts to think that is factually proven. You must be stupid. Don't like the two words before you prove it. He's thinking he's the meanest theist to formulate an argument so suave it. It's gotta be the truth, and I mean all of it. It's marvelous and leads all of us atheists and all of it. We should just shut up quickly and leave our tones moderate. He comes across my songs and then instantly he gets butthurt. He does a search of all of his arguments. No, they won't work. Now, who's the one that is responsible for how the world is? Who's the one that is responsible for how we all live? It takes the negative influences and poisons all the kids, so they just repeat the stupid shit that you and I did. Have you ever been told that you worship science? Well, I have. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine, I was talking to him the other day, adequate, as a matter of fact. He says that he's been accused of worshiping science. And it's by religious people. And those that claim not to be religious, but they believe in a whole bunch of other stuff that I would consider uh, foolishness. So having a healthy respect for a process, a method that has benefited all of us in so many different ways, I can't even begin to list them all here on this video, that's worship. And you have no problem with stretching the definition of that word so far out of its original shape that it loses meaning. See, what it is, is I think a lot of these, these people who would say stuff like that, they're really impressed, especially religious folks, they're really impressed with what Reverend Chickenfoot is over there doing. He's up on the port, but he's shucking and jiving, dancing around, changing the cadence of his voice, spewing platitudes and quotes from a book that's old as dirt, appealing to their emotion, selling them, selling them a cure for a disease that they don't have, telling them, you are born in sin and I got the cure that can, that can fix that ailment for you. See, we don't, people like me, Adequate, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, we don't look at scientists that way. We respect scientists. We are impressed by the knowledge that they have attained, the work that they've actually put in, their contribution to us as a species. We acknowledge the fact that from these curious minds, we've acquired all of these benefits, everything from having light in your house to the running water in your kitchen, to the very threads in the shirt, to the headphones I'm using, to the phone that I'm recording this on, to the computer and the website that you guys are watching this with. That's not worship. That's acknowledging what this process and this method has given to us. And if you guys, and I'm speaking to the religious people and other people that would make that that connection. If you guys can't think outside of the context of a religion, it just sounds like to me that you're, you're actually saying, you guys are in our same boat. Nah, you guys are in that boat by yourselves. And um, it's sinking fast. The second law of thermodynamics is the most curious of all. It says that total amount of disorder or entropy always increases in the universe. In other words, things rust. Things decay. Everything gets old and eventually falls apart and rots. It's been about 13 million years or so I wonder where the years have flown. I've been a part of it all, even with the stairs bands and grow. I seen the laws of physics sort out themselves. I've seen the stars and planets form from out of gravity wells. Even galaxies collided with others in cataclysmic wonder. I caused destruction on levels too high to have a number. Part of the gathered fabric attached to it like a magnet. I'm not a villain, there's no reason to panic.